This video explains the design and mode of operation of a magnetron. Magnetrons are still in use in some radar sets. They are low-cost and highly efficient generators that can operate at a frequency range of 1 to 95 gigahertz. The frequency of these power oscillators is usually fixed and determined by the internal resonators. However, some magnetrons allow mechanical changes to the frequency of the resonators of up to 10%. The magnetron features a massive anode block with an even number of resonators, ranging from 6 to 14. The magnetron is formally a diode with the cathode as the second electrode. This can also be seen in the circuit symbol, which symbolizes the resonators and decoupling. The cathode is held in place by the stable filament leads. For safety reasons, the anode block is at earth potential. This means that the cathode and filament leads are at a very high negative voltage potential. Therefore, the cathode is always directly heated and electrically connected to one of the filament leads. The high-frequency oscillations are decoupled via a coaxial cable or waveguide. The anode block can be designed differently. The classic form is the hole and slot type. Another form is the slot type. A variation of the slot type is the rising sun type. The different lengths of the slots are intended to prevent oscillation on harmonics. The vein type is the easiest to manufacture as the veins are inserted into prepared slots in the round material. The resonance frequency of the resonators can be checked during manufacturing and corrected if necessary. The single resonator is a resonant circuit. The surfaces of the slot form a capacitor. The circumference of the hole has the function of inductance. A resonator's oscillation is replicated in the adjacent resonator but 180 degrees out of phase. The area between the cathode and anode is called the interaction space, where electrons move. In the diagram, the interaction space is depicted as large to better visualize the electron's paths. However, in reality, the anode is much closer to the cathode, and the interaction space is much narrower. The magnetron's operation involves four phases, beginning with the generation and acceleration of an electron current. In a vacuum tube, a hot cathode emits numerous electrons into the airless space. The anode voltage between the cathode and anode creates a strong electric field. This electric field acts as a force on the electrons, accelerating them towards the anode and providing them with kinetic energy. As a result, a powerful anode current flows through the circuit. The speed and energy of the electrons can be determined from the color of the arrows. Blue indicates relatively slow and low energy electrons, while red indicates fast and high energy electrons. To analyze the path of the electrons without the influence of the resonators, we start by examining an anode with short circuited resonators. In the presence of a magnetic field that is perpendicular to the electric field, the movement of electrons is altered. This phenomenon is caused by the Lorentz force, which acts on moving charged particles in magnetic fields. In this case, the north pole of the magnetic field is in front of the screen, while the south pole is behind it. The U-shaped magnet in the illustration is only intended to show the direction of the magnetic field, in subsequent images, we must imagine the magnetic field without this magnet. The electrons are deflected more with a stronger magnetic field. If the field is too strong, electrons won't reach the anode and no current flows. To maximize the radius of the circular path, the anode voltage to magnetic field strength ratio needs to be set appropriately. The anode voltage should be adjusted to ensure that the anode current is present but at a lower value specified by the manufacturer. A too high anode current is also not advantageous. To demonstrate the effect of the RF field on the electron paths, we must now remove the virtual short circuits of the resonators in the graphics. 
Although the anode may have a lack of electrons because of its high positive voltage in comparison to the cathode, there are still ample free electrons available to interact with an electron passing by. This interaction causes the passing electron to slow down and transfer its energy to the resonator. As a result, the electron slows down and moves along a more curved path. When electrons are at rest within the anode material, they are evenly distributed as they repel each other. However, when an additional high-energy electron flies past, it displaces some of the electrons, creating the first oscillation at the cavity's resonance frequency. This oscillation's voltage is superimposed on the anode voltage. As a result, the electron gives up some of its kinetic energy to the oscillation, slowing down as a consequence. For electrons arriving half an oscillation period later, the anode section has become more positive, and this additionally accelerates the following electron. Due to the now alternately more positive and more negative charge at this section of the anode, the electron flies on in a zigzag course. However, it is not just a single electron that is moving in the moving space, but a whole cloud of electrons. Some fly past a section with a more positive potential and are accelerated more, while others fly past the neighboring section with a more negative potential and are slowed down slightly. The RF field in the resonators therefore initially causes a velocity modulation of the electrons, and after the electrons have traveled a short distance, a density modulation occurs. This slide shows a simple distance time diagram for a velocity. As the electrons move, the faster ones catch up with the slower ones, leading to the formation of bunches with a large number of electrons and areas with fewer electrons in between. After a certain amount of time, velocity modulation turns into density modulation. Therefore, the magnetron is classified as a type of velocity modulated tube. These electron bunches still move in a circular path toward the anode. With their high energy, the electron bunches influence the oscillation in the resonators. They are slowed down there and transfer their high kinetic energy to the oscillation. Due to the interaction with the resonators and the magnetic field, the locations of the highest density modulation in the interaction space run around the cathode and form a shape similar to a space charge wheel. The number of space charge spokes corresponds to half the number of resonators. The tangential speed of the electron spokes and the rotational speed of the wave in the resonators must be agreed upon for optimum operation. The speed of the electrons is regulated by the radar mechanic setting the anode current specified in the operating instructions. As they pass the slots in the resonators, these space charge spokes induce charge displacements in the anode, which feed the high-frequency field. On their way between the cathode and anode, the electrons in the spoke are slowed down several times before they reach the respective, then more negative, anode segment. Each time they slow down and also when they finally hit the anode, they give off energy to the high-frequency oscillation due to the multiple decelerations of the electron. Its energy is optimally utilized and efficiencies of 60 to 80 percent are achieved. The frequency at which a magnetron operates primarily depends on the resonator dimensions and the length of the interactive space between the anode and cathode. Since the resonators are interconnected through the interactive space, the entire system has multiple resonant frequencies due to different operating modes. To better illustrate the oscillation modes and operating modes of the magnetron, the anode segments have been unwound in the image. Magnetrons are typically operated in the pi mode, which is the most stable and effective operating mode. This mode is so called because the phase difference between two resonators is 180 degrees, which corresponds to pi. When magnetrons are operated in other modes, such as 3 quarters pi, 1 half pi, or 1 quarter pi, the power and efficiency, as well as the oscillation frequency, decrease. 
In one half pi mode, the magnetron oscillates at a lower frequency and the resonators are operated at its harmonic. The phase difference between two resonators is 90 degrees, which corresponds to half a pi. The number of modes that can be created in a magnetron depends on the number of resonators. For example, to create a 3 quarters pi mode, the number of resonators must be divisible by 6 to create a circulating wave. The most effective operating mode with the best efficiency is the pi mode. This mode can be achieved by connecting every second bar of the resonators with shorting rings. In the pi mode, these short circuits have no effect because the same potential is applied to the left and right of the shorting bar. In any other mode, an equalizing current would flow, causing the oscillation to collapse. You can see the decoupling loop in the resonator on the far left. A frequently used method of decoupling the RF energy is the decoupling loop in one of the resonators. The center conductor of a coaxial cable is fed into the cavity where it forms a coil with only one winding. The magnetic field of the oscillation acts to induce a current. However, this coupling is very strong. Unfortunately, a magnetron is not very frequency stable. The oscillation frequency also depends on the load. With a fixed coupling, load changes have a particularly strong effect on the frequency. For this reason, the coupling loop is sometimes positioned slightly outside the resonance cavity. Here the coupling is no longer as strong. The wire end of the loop and the outer conductor of the cable are soldered to the anode block. However, the center conductor of the coaxial cable can also be connected directly to one of the anode segments. An RF voltage is tapped directly here. However, the center conductor of the coaxial cable can also be connected to one of the strapping rings. An RF voltage is also tapped here. A waveguide can also be connected to one of the resonators. The iris of the waveguide connection forms an obstacle for the currents of the oscillation through the inductance of the resonator. This means that the upper side has a different voltage potential than the lower side. This creates an electric field between the opposing waveguide walls, which then propagates as a TE10 wave in the waveguide. With tunable magnetrons, the resonators can be mechanically tuned. The movement is transferred into the vacuum space by pressing a diaphragm-like wall of the tube inwards from the outside. The most common form of mechanical tuning of a magnetron is the so-called crown of thorns tuning. Here, tuning pins made of brass or aluminum are inserted into the resonators and act on the inductance of the resonator. Like coil cores, the penetration depth is a measure of the detuning. As can be seen here in the model, two resonators, the one covered by the heating leads and the one containing the decoupling loop, cannot be tuned. This limits the tuning bandwidth to around 5 to 7 percent. Capacitive tuning is sometimes referred to as cookie cutter tuning due to the cylindrical shape of the tuning frame, which resembles a cookie cutter. In this type of tuning, the strapping rings are embedded in milled notches in the bars of the resonators. The strapping ring for the even resonators is on the upper side, while the one for the odd resonators is on the bottom side of the anode block. There is always a small capacitance between the strapping rings and the skipped section, which runs parallel to the resonator. When an additional piece of metal is inserted between the strapping ring and the wall of the notch, the original capacitor becomes a series connection of two capacitors. The resulting capacitance is increased due to the greatly reduced spacing. Even if only every second bar receives such a tuning plate, the change in capacitance affects both the resonator to the left and the one to the right. This means that all resonators can be detuned, resulting in a bandwidth of up to 10%. Magnetrons are still inexpensive high-power oscillator transmitters for radar sets but have disadvantages in radar signal processing.
Special microwave ovens fitted with magnetrons are used for industrial heating and drying but also in the catering industry and in the home for heating food. The magnetron sputtering process, also known as cathode sputtering, is a process for producing very thin layers of material by vapor deposition in a vacuum chamber in the pressure range from 10 to the power of minus 3 to 10 to the power of minus 2 millibars. This is used, for example, to provide glass surfaces with a transparent layer that shields and reflects radio frequency radiation. This is a method of preventing multiple reflections in the cockpit of the Lockheed Martin F-22A Raptor fighter through a gold vaporized cockpit cover. I hope you enjoyed this video. You may find the internet radar tutorial useful. It has a vast collection of radar set data. Thank you for your attention.